And I'd like to move on now to my, uh, well, our next guest, our next HitLab guest, uh, Arash Yasei from uh, Humor, based in the UK, uh, my, uh, my motherland. Um, and uh, Arash is the Global Clinical Director at Humor. So I think I have Arash here. Are you there, Arash? I am, yes. Uh, won't let me turn my video on. Oh, fantastic. Um, <laughs> but thank you for having us. Really no, pleasure no, to be here. No, wonderful to have you on. It's our pleasure to have you, uh, of course. Um, so I'd love to, you know, I'm sure the, the audience would love to hear about your background. Um, if you could take like a, a minute or two just to give us an idea about where you've come from and, and how you've come to be at Humor. Sure, fantastic. Well, thank you very much for having us. Um, firstly, let me introduce Humor. We are a global digital health company that specializes in remote patient monitoring. And we do this both in healthcare settings, but also running decentralized clinical trials um, in many places around the world. By my own background, so I'm a pediatrician by training. I continue to practice and have academic roles here in London. And I've been with the company now for two years, and I'm now the global clinical director. And my job is to shore up all of our evidence generation across our platforms, um, both in the trial space, but also in healthcare. It's been a really interesting journey. We're now coming out of the COVID pandemic. And what we're really seeing is all those concepts and ideas that were first started in, in the pandemic, we're now seeing them being applied in a much more long-term and sustainable way, in a way I think is gonna be here to stay in both the healthcare space and actually increasingly in the research space. Jerry, I think you might be muted. I don't know if it's just me. No, it's me. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, I just wanted to give you the floor so I, I, I wouldn't interrupt. But uh, no, really wonderful to have you on, um, Arash. And um, you know, our pleasure to have you on to, to talk about yourself and also about humor as well. And thank you for, for giving us a bit of background. Uh, on, the, uh, on that note of you talking about evidence gathering and so forth, like, how are you, like, how are you like, right now able to ensure uh, good patient adherence and retention you know, around you know, remote patient monitoring deployments and stuff? I think it's a really challenging thing to do and it requires a lot of steps and really good collaboration between all parts of your business. I think first and foremost, the ethos at the very center has to be about patient choice. I think we need to realize that digital can't be something you force on people. Digital has to be a choice that people voluntarily come to. And that is something that's embedded at every step of the way that we've designed our platform, the flexibility that we've put in, um, but also the way that we work with patient groups and we work with the clinicians who best understand them. Um, that starts right at the very beginning of any project. Um, many of the projects that we do, we make sure there's a patient representative who's involved in how we design both the workflows, but also how the user interface is going to look. The platform that we've used has been iterated countless times by many different patient groups across many different countries, different therapeutic areas. And we've taken all of that feedback and used it to iteratively improve and redesign that interface. And the result of all those things is a what we feel is a really pleasant user experience. So it is fairly typical for our deployments to have adherence rates of 90, 95 plus percent. Um, one of our most recent deployments, which we published in, in Nature, has a 99% adherence for the key endpoints we need to, to collect. We get user satisfaction scores of incredibly high rating. So one of our most recent deployments that we did in Germany, we had 99.7% of users say that they found that app useful and valuable for that care condition. And I think that really stems from a commitment to understand what the patient's needs are from a design perspective, from a care perspective, and to work in collaboration with them. It's not easy, but I think it's really worth it if you take those steps early on in that journey. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, with, with any kind of uh, progression uh, around digital health, there has to be some, there has to be some kind of understanding in terms of uh, working with each other to, to, to move forwards and stuff. Um, so yeah, no, thank you for that insight. Thank you for, for providing that, uh, you know, that, that data as well. Uh, for everyone to kind of get a really good picture around too. Um, could you talk a little bit around the clinical buy-in uh, for new digital techs, you know, like RP and stuff? It can often actually be quite similar. 
to making sure about that patient choice. Because I think, and I, I res this resonates a lot with me as a clinician, at the end of the day, what we all want is to ensure that we're delivering the best for our patients. And I think if, when you can show the outcomes that you've delivered already and, and, and share the vision of what you want, which is a convenient, easy to use way of delivering care that's, that's better for the patient and not forcing it on them, that's firstly one of the first steps I think that needs to happen to get that buy-in, that kind of authentic understanding that you're putting the patient first. I think a second thing that is really important and, and one that is a lot of work, but for us has paid a huge amount of dividend, is committing quite early on to generating that evidence to support the eff efficacy, the effectiveness, and actually the usability of your platform. Um, it's additional work because effectively you are publishing a peer review journal almost for every deployment that you do. And that is actually what we do. And a huge part of the resource that we dedicate goes towards writing up that research, um, publishing it, presenting it, discussing it. But I think that transparency that it brings and the challenge it presents internally to really ensure you, you get the best outcomes, that really wins over clinical teams. And, and I'm seeing a lot, some of the most exciting collaborations that we've had have actually come as a direct result of the research and publications that we've done. So for example, um, we've recently done a, a care deployment in, in Wales, in, in part of the UK, where we use remote patient monitoring to improve the management of patients with heart failure, new patients who've got a relatively new diagnosis. Um, and because we've presented those outcomes and we, we've looked at that in quite a robust way, we've been able to showcase those outcomes in a much wider level than previously. So lots of benefits it's brought, but for me, the most exciting one is we've taken a clinical process that typically takes about six months to optimize these patients, and we've reduced it down to a mean time of 28 days. And because we were very open and honest about how we were going to analyze that, evaluate it and present it, it's given us a really great platform to now take bits of that learning and apply it in a whole host of other settings. So we've also now done it in cardiothoracic surgery, where we've done um, almost a thousand patients through um, that platform. And we've shown that we can detect deterioration with almost 90% specificity. But actually now we've opened up entirely new avenues of research. So we've just recently published a paper in um, cardiac research where we've been able to recruit patients within 12 to 14 days, so over 100 patients, um, and been able to show that we can monitor AF remotely. That's been really exciting. And I think the thing it's really now opening up is this whole world of digital biomarkers, entirely new ways of detecting deteriorations in patient state. And people have seen the work that we've done and are now really interested to collaborate in this space. And we've got some really exciting projects coming up and um, a number of collaborations on the horizon, which as a clinician and as a scientist, that's the thing I'm really excited about. No, that's, that's terrific. No, thank you. Thank you so much. And really, really impressive results uh, that you're getting uh, and, and stuff from your, uh, from your projects and stuff. Uh, just as we wrap up, um, Arash, we are coming up to time now, and I always say that we, you know, we, we never have enough time to, to absolutely get through everything, but I think my final question here is, um, how can we maximize and, and speed up impact, you know, from the outset of, of any uh, kind of digital health project delivery? I think we have to work as a team. We have to see digital health as an extension of the multidisciplinary team. Uh, and what that means is, is, is working in collaboration. Um, the tech company suppliers are never going to have all of the answers, but at the same time, working with providers, working with academic health science networks, that's where I think is going to be the absolute maximal benefit for patients and healthcare systems. Um, so I guess my, my plea to the industry as a whole is um, let's all communicate with each other, let's get in touch, let's explore as many avenues as we have as possible. Um, and maybe when we see you know, an exciting project that someone else has done, let's try and collaborate and see if we can get that to, to the next stage and the next level. I guess that would be my call to arms, but I think it's a really exciting space. And certainly we at Humor, we are really excited to be working with as many people as possible to ensure that we can impact as many patient lives as we possibly can. No, that's fantastic. No, thank you. I think that's. I think you're beating the same drum as a lot of other people within the industry there in terms of calling for, you know, collaboration and uh, and uh, and and friendship uh, to really move forwards and stuff. So, uh, no, thank you so much for your insights. Thanks so much for sharing your data and terrific results and stuff, um, Arash. And you know, really look forward to seeing where you guys go with humour uh, in the future and stuff. So. Uh, Thanks so much, especially since it's a little bit later in the UK now as well. So I really appreciate you coming on in the later, later part of the day.
thank you for having us. It's been a it's been a real pleasure. Yeah, of course, uh, it's been our pleasure to have you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Arash, uh, Dr. Arash uh, Yasei from uh, Humor. There, um, if you want to connect with Arash, of course, his LinkedIn details are in the chat. So please feel free to connect with him. Uh, and Arash, I think there may be some questions in the chat. Uh, if you could, if you if you have the time, and if you'd be so kind to see if you could answer any of them, uh, I'm sure the audience would be grateful. Uh, and if you could join us, uh, you know, at two p.m. I know it's going to be later there uh, for some of the breakout. Uh, networking sessions, uh, you're more than welcome to, of course. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Thank you, Arash.